then I'm going to take the blade and hold it at an angle like this and cut out the groove, cut out a v-groove. So this is where I use my magnifier so I can see what I'm actually doing. And then it's just a matter of keeping it the same width or distance away from the black line as you come down the line. That's one piece. Take out the other side. And then we'll do the other one. I'm cheating. I'm actually looking underneath my magnifiers. Let's see. Here we go. Okay, now the part has two grooves in it, one here and one here, and the parts easily fold up at the, on those points. So we have a nice rectangular box forming. That's what we want to do. So now it's a matter of just gluing it. So the best way to glue this is to get a couple blocks, some wax paper, Bring the blocks in tightly alongside the piece and then clamp the wood. No, this clamp may not work. Okay. Like that. So now I can take the piece out and I can put it back in. And when you put it back in, it's nice and straight up and down. Could use another clamp. Oh, here we go. Better clamp. Right tool for the right job. Get nice and tight like that. Now all we need to do is apply some CA. I'll start about three eighths of an inch from the one end and go to about three eighths of an inch to the other side. And I'll do that on both grooves. And I leave that empty on the ends because when I fold it up I don't want it to flow out ends and I'll stick it in there. Now when this dries it's going to be a nice strong joint. Now I can just spray this on but in this case rather than get the activator all over the place I'll just drip a little bit down onto it. See if I can find a better tool to apply it with. Now we haven't sprayed everything with the stuff to save. We haven't used as much activator either. This is called CA activator or accelerator. And you want to use one that's foam safe. This one's foam safe. So where are we at here? So if we take these guys off now, we now have this nice little glued up box. And we're ready to trim it. 
And the best way I've found to trim this now would be to stick it on top of a, a board so that this lies inside the uh, box and then take the knife and trim it. So we can come down here and we can trim this part off here. I exude my back. I exude my back. Uh, when you're doing this, it's always nice to start in the corner and bring the knife out. Because if you try to bring the knife into the corner this way, you won't cut all the material in that corner. So start in the corner and move away from the corner. Okay, so here's the completed part. I didn't cut off the ends here because I'm in the process of changing the design and I may want to leave those on. So I left them on for the time being. This notch out here in the front is where the servos go. I may not have needed to take that out either, but I, since I was here, I just did it. So now this is ready to get put on the bottom of the airplane. These back two notches right here correspond to the notches in here. Oh, it's the next one's up. This one goes right here. And that's where it would go. But it's not glued together yet. So that's where it would go. Okay. So you might ask, why am I building another 30X? Well, they, they were a lot of fun, for one thing. But mainly, I'm doing it to test this little motor right here. This is a 10 by 15 uh, millimeter motor that has an 11,500 kV and it's sold by uh, Hobby City. And the nice thing about this is it fits directly inside the GWS 30 millimeter fan. And uh, this one already has a motor in it. This is the one that I've been testing. And uh, the numbers are turning out to be very uh, positive, so we're looking for, at uh, some a nice little flying airplane. So basically, now that you know how to do this, you can apply this to any uh, Depron plane that you want to make. So hope this was helpful. Bye.